at the early time when our planet was born, we had an atmosphere of moist water, methane, ammonia, the primordial atmosphere. And this, this primordial atmosphere, from the breath of creation, from the energy which came from the sun, a process began to produce and synthesize the adenine and guanine from the ammonia and the methane gas. By the way, in my diamond process, I use primordial gas to produce the diamond from gas phase. Methane gas and ammonia gas. The reason I used ammonia gas because I needed the nitrogen to put into the diamond lattice, lattice to give luster to the diamond. It's ironic that the same process has been taken care in our atmosphere as the manna was uh, falling from the skies and filling the primordial seas as the rains washed down the nutrients which was prerequisite for life formation. Of course, in the early evolution, spontaneous DNA did not evolve in the primordial seas by rather short chain DNAs, in other words, viruses. The primordial seas were loaded with viruses and bacteria. And in order for a higher order of life to evolve, a form of life had to evolve to clean up the primordial seas. But even before that, a process had to evolve to produce adenosine and guanosine phosphate to build DNAs because without that, life cannot evolve. Even viruses have the adenosine and guanosine phosphate in their DNAs. The source of ATP was crucial. So there must have been some organelles manufacturing ATP, adenos adenosine triphosphates. And this organelle is known as mito mitochondria. The mitochondria was the first organ in the primordial sea that it's evolved. And this mitochondria then later on provided the fuel tank for the chloroplast and the cyanobacteria. Now the reason I go in this detail so that you will understand later on what life crystal is and how life crystal functions. But let's back up a little bit now and we return back to the primordial soup later and take a look at life crystal. Now, uh, in our cell today, every cell in our body, we have numerous mitochondria producing ATP. ATP is the primary fuel of your cell, providing 95% of your energy. The adenosine and gonosine is sequenced laterally in your DNA. We are made of it. All our enzymes are made of it. The mono, di, and triphosphates of adenosine and the guanosine are the basic building blocks of all our factories and proteins inside our cells. These components are controlling the respiration of our cell membrane, the nutrient flow of our cell membrane. And even the ATP aminase, our immune system, is dependent on them. Now I set out to replicate nature's process and repeat the Krebs cycle, which takes place within our cell to produce ATP in order to be able to make the life crystal. It was a long road took me about five years, and finally I got the life crystal, which contains ATP, GTP, and pentacarbon sugars in the unpurified form, and that is the life crystal 
nutritional or dietary supplement. Its purpose to provide energy and to provide the ATP and GTP for restoration, to restore the functional and cell membranes, the enzymes, and of course there are other very important characteristics to live crystal. Now, I do not want to put claim on the live crystal nutrition supplement, but I tell you, go to the library and pick up any biochemical book and read upon or read up of what adenosine and gonosine phosphate can do for you. And the, also the function of the glucose and fructose phosphate, which is participating in the Krebs cycle to converting uh, uh, into ATP and energy supply for yourselves. But it's very interesting that purified live crystal, when I isolate the ATP and GTP from the live crystal crew, the nutritional supplement, purifying through an eight-step purification process and redissolve it in distilled water, it will polarize, depolarize the water, changing the bonding energies of the water and the dipole moment. Again, you can read it in any standard biochemical book. If you depolarize the water, its boiling point will rise and its freezing points will go down. But more than that, Depolarized water, we losing affinity to hydrophilic molecules. What this means, that the sodium and potassium ion in your system will have a smaller water jacket around it. And as a result, more of them will pass through the septums and the microtubules in your cell, delivering more energy. And once you supply more energy to your cell, the cell will rejuvenate, rebuild, become strong. Because we are going through a devolutionary process because our sun is cooling and we're losing energy and our cells becoming punier and punier and eventually life will be extinct. But for now, we can reverse the trend. We can resupply our cells with energy and the rejuvenation and restoration will follow. A very simple example, giving live crystal intravenously in countries and in clinics where we're doing clinical work. It's changing the size of lymphocyte to 20 to 30 microns. And all the organ cells become bigger and stronger because you're providing more energy. But what other thing biochemical books tell you will happen when you depolarize the water. This depolarized water, because the smaller diameter now, with a small, smaller water jacket around it, are able to pass through blocked passages, narrow down passages. Like what you usually find people with epilepsy, seizures, strokes, so once you can penetrate the small passages and re-establishing conductivity for the nerve impulses, a recovery will follow. And the seizures of those children and people with epilepsy will recover and stroke weakness will recover as a result. And I'm not saying that the biochemical books you can pick up in library and they will tell you that. 